begin with a meditation. If it's appropriate for you to do so, go ahead and close your eyes and begin to take some long, deep, slow, relaxing breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. With every inhale, feel more peace entering your body and mind. And with every exhale, feel like you are able to let go of anything that you do not want. Breathing in peace and letting go on every exhale. We picture ourselves on a beautiful mountain in the center of a circular grove of trees. In the center of our circle, a bonfire blazes forth and it lights us and the grove up with a sacred golden light. We recognize this as the light of perfect love and perfect trust. It burns away everything that is unlike itself, leaving us safe and clear. Into this sacred space, we invoke the presence of our Creator. To many of us here, that Creator reveals itself as Father and Mother, God and Goddess. We also invite all of our teachers, angels, we dedicate this time that we spend together to them and to each other. We ask that we be guided and led as we walk on the path so that we become happier and more peaceful, more prosperous, more healthy, more loving people. Thank you very much. And if it's appropriate for you to do so out loud, you can say the words, blessed be. I'd like to revisit the topic of the magical sphere of influence. It's very common to get questions such as, will this spell bring me? Will this spell do this for me? Will this spell cause such and such to happen for me? It's really important to understand that the spell, the physical spell, doesn't do anything. I liken it to a piece of sheet music. The sheet music doesn't play music. The sheet music doesn't do anything, but it has information. It's like a communication from the composer to the player. So if you are a piano player and you take a piece of sheet music, depending on your level of skill, you can have an experience of what the composer wanted the music to sound like. Because you can place that sheet music right on your music stand and you can play it. Now, if you don't have any skill in playing that instrument, for instance, if you don't have any skill playing that piano, then that sheet music isn't going to do you much good. Uh, you may either have to get an easier piece of music, or you may have to actually learn how to play the piano if you don't know how to play. So the sheet music is very helpful if you're ready for it. But if you don't understand how to read the music, if you don't understand how to play the piano, or if your skill level is, is low, then the sheet music isn't going to do much for you. Most people, when they get that piece of sheet music and they either don't know how to play the piano, don't know how to read music, or they're not very uh, at, a, at an advanced enough level to be able to play that music, most people don't say, that sheet music didn't work. But a lot of times people that have a misunderstanding of spells will take a spell and say, well, that spell didn't work. And it's not that the spell didn't work, just like the, the sheet music didn't work. The spell doesn't have any inherent power. The power in magic comes from you. But the power in magic comes from your skill level. And your your level of skill is what represents your sphere of influence over any situation. So if you're capable of having a level of skill to create a particular change at a particular level, then that is considered to be something that is in your magical sphere of influence. But if you are not at a level of skill or experience to be able to create change at a certain level, it means that it's not within your magical sphere of influence. But if something's not within your magical sphere of influence, that doesn't mean that the spell didn't work necessarily, nor does it mean that magic doesn't work. It means that you weren't able to work magic, just like a person without the skill level in music wouldn't be able to play that piece of sheet music if it was too advanced for them. So what we want to remember is that when we are working magic, that part of working effective magic is having 
that witch's pyramid strong. And the, the one part of the witch's pyramid that can be a challenge for beginners is the faith part be able to have faith that your magic is working. It's impossible to have faith in something working that is outside of your magical sphere of influence. That's the problem. Something that that seems to be way too big for you, you're not going to be able to have faith that that will work. You won't be able to muster that kind of faith because you know that that's too much, or you've never proven to yourself what you can do. You don't have any track record necessarily if you're a beginner. So that's one of the reasons why I recommend that when you're starting off with spells, that you do things that are just a little bit of a stretch for you. Just a tiny little bit of a stretch for you. It's silly to do magic for something that you could easily do without magic. That's not, that's, that doesn't make sense either. So you don't want to make, you don't want to do a spell to brush your teeth, let's say. That doesn't make sense. But let's say that you had, speaking of teeth, let's say that you had a dental issue that needed to be taken care of. Now, you could do a spell that your tooth gets fixed, and then you'd be led to the right dentist or whatever. But doing a spell to grow new teeth that's probably outside of your sphere of influence, right? So doing a spell to heal a broken bone is one thing, but doing a spell to grow a new limb is probably outside of your sphere of influence. That's not to say that it's impossible to do those kinds of magical things, because theoretically anything is possible. But to try to do something that's outside of your sphere of influence won't help you. All it will do is destroy any little bit of faith that you've started to build for yourself. So when you're working on a piece of magic, one of the first things that you want to ask yourself is, where does this fit in my magical sphere of influence? And if you don't have much history in magic, that's going to be difficult to determine. So the first thing you want to do is decide, is this something that is is that I can really see myself being, doing, or having? Is this something that could happen? If it seems like it's way beyond, then all you need to do is break your goal down into something a, a, a little bit more achievable. That's all. It's not that you need to abandon your goal. You just need to pull it in a little bit to not be overtaxing your faith. So, for instance, if you, I, we've had people say, well, I want to I want a spell to win the lottery. I want to win the Powerball. A couple problems with a spell to win the Powerball. For one thing, it's a manipulative spell. You're, you are asking to manipulate something that is controlled by other people and that a lot of other people are involved in. So you're, for one thing, you're, you're trying to manipulate other people's behavior by, doing, by, by wanting to win the Powerball, for one thing. For another thing, you are also going up against everybody else that's playing that, that game. So there's, there's, there's that. And not only that, but the, the amount of money that you're trying to get is probably so far beyond any amount of money that you've ever experienced in your personal life that it doesn't compute to your deep mind. It just doesn't even compute as a possibility. It's so far out of your sphere of influence. So the spells for the Powerball are almost always a bad idea on pretty much every level. Because it's the wrong kind of magic, it's the wrong uh, approach to magic, and it's also way outside of your sphere of influence. Rather than doing that, rather than than saying it must come from the source, if I'm working with somebody and they say, no, 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 I want the Powerball, I want the Powerball. Okay, well, why do you want the Powerball? What's that going to give to you? What is that going to bring to you? What is that going to do for you? 
And it's usually not that they want that amazing amount, that huge amount of money so much. It's that they want financial freedom. They don't want to worry about money anymore. They want to be able to, to you know, to, to take care of their family. They want to be able to, you know, to, to buy a home for their, for their mom, maybe. They want to buy a car for their kids, whatever it is. I say, okay, well, then list those things. Let's list all of those things that you think that this Powerball is going to give you. And let's just take one of them. Let's just take one of those little things that seems that it could be a stretch for you, but it's doable. And let's not say that it has to come from a particular source. Let's not limit the universe like that. Let's just say, I want to be able to buy a car for my my mother. Let's say my mother needs a new car. That's one of the things I want with the car. Okay. So is that possible? Is that something that, that is within your, your sphere of influence? Or is it just a little bit of a stretch? Or does that seem impossible? You know, and if it seems somewhat possible, then yeah, let's do a spell on getting a, a car for your mom. Maybe the reason why you wanted that Powerball is because you have a bunch of debts and you want to pay off all your old debts. Well, that's a righteous desire of the heart. You don't need the Powerball to pay off all your debts. Let's look at your goal of being debt free. Now, how doable is that? Does that seem outside of your sphere of influence? Is it just a little bit of a stretch? Because if it is too big of a stretch, then let's cut that down and let's just take one debt. Let's just take that one debt and we'll do a spell to pay that one debt. And then once you get that done, then we'll pay, do a spell to pay another debt, let's say. And then what you're doing is that that you're building your faith as you go about it. You're, 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 you're doing two things at once. You're, you're getting your desires met and you're building your faith. As you build your faith and you get your desires met, then you are actually expanding your sphere of influence. I get this a lot of times. I want my ex to come back to me. Okay, well, is that in your sphere of influence? Is that up to you to to decide and to determine what another person does just because you want them to do that? Is that within your purview? Does that make sense? Do you do you like the idea that that somebody could just cast a spell on you and make you do anything that they wanted, whether or not you wanted to do it? Does that make sense to you? So is it in your sphere of influence to force somebody to come back to you that perhaps doesn't want to? I understand that you want them to. I understand that you're sad that they're gone. I, I understand that you think that your happiness is dependent on them coming back to you. I understand that, but is it in your sphere of influence to make them do those things? No, it is not. However, that doesn't mean that all is lost and that magic can't help in this situation. What you could do is a spell to let go of that relationship, to release that relationship. You could let go of your need for that particular person. You could do also a spell to draw the person to you that is your true love, that is your perfect mate. You, There's a lot that you could do that could handle the issue in front of you that is in your sphere of influence. But it, you, if you've decided that the only way that you're going to be happy is, is if this person comes back to you, then you've put yourself into a, a, a situation where something that's completely outside of your sphere of influence is the only thing that is going to make you happy. And then you're going to be spinning your wheels trying to get yourself to to cast a spell to make them come back to you or paying these spell casters out there to do it for you. You're just going to waste a bunch of money. You're going to waste a bunch of time. And and you're not going to get what you want. Even if you did get what you want, what you thought you wanted, you won't be happy with it because that person would be there against them their will. They would be a prisoner, not a lover. Right? So maybe you have cancer and you want a spell to to cure your cancer. Well, if you've never worked magic before, that might be a bit beyond your sphere of influence. Maybe that's that's too much of a big of a spell. But what could you do? What could, what is in your sphere of influence? Well, you could get uh, a, a spell to reduce or or eliminate your side effects from your chemotherapy. That's much more within your sphere of influence necessarily than annihilating the cancer, right? You could do a spell to find the best oncologist that has cutting edge understanding of this particular cancer. You could do a spell for that. 
that's much more within your sphere of influence. But if you've never done a lot of magic, let alone seen a, a big healing where something completely reverses itself, it's probably something that's beyond your, your sphere of influence. And you just have to know that. You just have to realize that. It, 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 magic is not the same thing as wishful thinking. And a lot of people believe it is. A lot of people teach that it is. I see wish spells and things like that. That's Wishing is not the same as magic. Wishing it, it has no place in magic. Magic is about willing, willing that something be such, such and such. And if it's not something that you are certain that, that you have control over, then it's probably not something that you're, you're ready to tackle. And so you want to break it down into a smaller, more obtainable goal so that you can will for that thing to happen. There's certain things that are never going to be in your sphere of influence. There are certain things that you will never have control over. You will not be able to will that there be world peace. You will not be able to will that there won't be racism. You won't be able to will those, those things. You can't will that the war ends in a certain country. But you could do a spell for your own protection. You could do a spell for your own peacefulness. You could do a spell that you are attracted to or that you manifest um, some kind of particular organization where you can contribute work toward these goals. So it's very important to realize that some things are never going to be in your sphere of influence and some things are just a matter of you expanding your sphere of influence in order to be able to influence them. Now, for the things that are not ever in your sphere of influence or not currently in your sphere of influence, there is still something that can be done. And that is that concept of a higher power. We oftentimes use, work with something called the solar light in my work, but whatever works for you, there are. that's the difference between magic and the miraculous. Magic and miracles are not the same thing. They, they, get, they get mixed up a lot. People say, oh, ma- magic and miracles, magic and miracles. So they're completely different things. Magic is based on your sphere of influence and your will and your uh, ability to create personal change and have influence over a situation based on your goals, your focus, what you want. And that's very important. It's a very important part of the craft. And a lot of what I teach helps to uh, hone those skills and, and helps you to increase and expand your sphere of influence so that you can have more and more influence over things. Those are the things that you can handle, that you can have influence over. But the things that you can't have influence over, those are more of the purview of miracles. And a miracle isn't something that you can choose. A miracle isn't something that you have any say over, other than whether you're willing to accept it or not. A miracle, the only thing that you can do with a miracle is accept it and be ready for it. But a miracle is a higher power shifting things in such a way that it works out in a way that you didn't know was possible. So you couldn't have willed it. You couldn't have visualized it. You couldn't have come up with it. A miraculous healing is not the same thing as you doing a healing spell. A healing spell would be you willed it, and so therefore it is. A a miraculous healing is I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle this. I don't know how I'm ever going to be able to get, get well. I have no way of knowing. I've no, I have no power here. I'm powerless over this disease. When, when a, a miracle happens and, and, and things are turned around, it, it happens in a way that you couldn't have figured out by yourself. So those miracles can happen for the, the things that are outside of your sphere of influence, and you have to just be ready for them and willing for them to, to happen. You have to be able to invoke for those things to happen, but you have no say. You have that, that there's not it has nothing to do with you guiding or directing or willing or focusing or any of that stuff. That's completely different. So miracles are often things that happen outside of your sphere of influence and you are ready for those things to happen. But those things are a, a, a result of grace rather than will. Getting back to magic rather than miracles, getting back to your sphere of influence, it's very important that you define your sphere of influence very clearly in your mind each time you work a spell. So that way you're not 
setting yourself up for failure, but you're also allowing yourself to have success that that is pushing the boundaries of what you think is possible each and every time. You always want to work just beyond what you think is possible and not any farther. But you don't want to waste your magic and waste your time uh, doing spells for things that are easy, easy for you to just obtain without magic. It's a constant expansion, expansion. You're always pressing up against what you think is possible, but not going so far beyond it that you're setting yourself up for failure. It's very important to realize that and to remember that each and every time you work a piece of magic, you need to ask yourself, where is this within my sphere of influence? I sometimes just give myself a scale from one to 10. Where do I think this is? One being I could just go and do it, and 10, there's no possible way this could happen. Right. So I always like to work at a right around six. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just pushing up against it, but I'm not I'm not injuring my magical body by trying to go too far too fast. Think of it like working out in the gym. If you if you're working out with a weight that's much, much too too hard for you, much putting too much resistance on your muscle, or you're putting the resistance too quickly, you're gonna cause a strain and an injury and that's gonna require rest. And then when you come back, then you're going to have to be more careful. The same thing goes with your magical musculature. If you go too far too fast, it can cause injury to your magical infrastructure, which is going to cause you to need to take a rest from magic for a while. And you don't want that. You don't need that. You want to just always be moving just beyond what you think is possible and allowing yourself to build that faith slowly over time so that it starts to create its own momentum. And so each spell continues that momentum of success, building on success, building on success, building on success, not trying to have some sort of wish fulfillment. Now, for most witches, though, that that have a lot of experience, what they consider to be just beyond their sphere of influence would seem like pie in the sky to people who have never done this sort of thing before, because it starts to be you can really do that. <laughs> you, you can really, you really make that happen. You know, it seems like whoa, you're powerful, but it's power that's been built slowly over time. Just like the weightlifter in the in the gym. You know, to a person that's never lifted weights before, they think, whoa, I'll never be able to be to lift something that heavy. I'll never be able to have that kind of form. I'll never be able to be that that defined and that built. But that's not true. Because the person exhibiting all of those capabilities started somewhere too. Everybody starts somewhere. So don't compare yourself necessarily against witches that have a lot of experience and and expect that the spell itself is going to make the same results happen for you. You have to expand that sphere of influence. You have to build those power bodies. You have to do the work. And you have to stay with it. And, and just like any other skill, over time, your power increases and your sphere of influence expands and you become more and more powerful and you have more and more success and you're, be, you're able to have influence over a wider and wider sphere. And that's just a, a matter of practicality. That's just how it works. And it's like we say, slowly is holy. You don't, you don't go for the big fish right away. You go for the little ones, <laughs> little by little over time. And the momentum is such that you look back and you think, whoa, that happened so fast. How did that happen so fast? But in the midst of it, in the building process, it sometimes seems like it's growing rather slowly. But you have to be patient and loving with yourself and allow yourself to have success rather than failure. And the way to have success is to stay just barely outside your sphere of influence, just barely pressing farther and farther into more and more success, more and more success over time. It's important to remember that certain spells that you get have been written very well and will have a particular effect on the deep mind. But even those spells that are very well written and that have a certain effect on the deep mind that you that you come across, even those still are nothing more than a piece of sheet music. You have to be the musician. You have to practice your scales. You have to practice every day. You have to build that power up. You have to learn how to expand that sphere of influence. It doesn't happen all by itself. It happens because you work and you practice. It's your craft. It's a craft. 
and it's yours. And it's your responsibility to build that power. And you build that power by working very diligently and practicing every single day. And over time, you become stronger, more powerful, and able to handle larger and larger goals. And you can do it. It's just a matter of commitment, and it's a matter of daily work. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I will talk to you very soon, and until that time, blessed be. Mm -hmm.